Hey there, TT. Welcome back to the channel. It's a girl, Vermo, and I'm back with another reaction video. Guys, today I'm super excited. I'm going to be reacting to Candace Owens' podcast. If you haven't seen any of my reactions to Candace, click the link above. I have a full playlist on Candace where I reacted to a couple of her videos. So please make sure you check it out. And this is Beyonce's, Beyonce fans. Don't come for me. My view of her, my review of our country music oh my goodness all right i am a beyonce fan <laughs> all right guys i'm super pumped to get into this video but before we get started we have some amazing people watching us for the first time if you're new here hello i'm vera i do reaction videos we vibe to different artists on there react to different songs from all over the world it is something that you love why not join veracity it is subscribe button below turn on the post notification bell so that you can always be the first person to know whenever a new video drops and with that guys let's go all right happy thursday everybody and you know normally we don't cover comments until the end of the show but i saw one comment that made its way through on yesterday's episode when we were talking about the topic of ho hunting and one person said candace no you don't actually want hoes to go to prison you don't actually want to hunt them you don't want to be extreme what they're doing in russia is wrong and so I wanted to clarify, because it's important for me that you guys know my viewpoints. On the topic of hoes, I am, in fact, a radical. Yes, I am. I am far right, far left, whatever you want to call it. I am that. I think that history books are going to refer to me as a neo-ho hunter. I'm serious, you guys. I want to pop out of a van. I want to Elmer Fudd it. I want to find these people. I want to throw a net on them. But just to be clear, I'm not going to hurt them. I'm going to bring them, as I said, to a clinic a holistic clinic holistic just to be very clear i'm just going to ask them questions basic questions like why did you take your boobs out why did you do it why did you feel the need to take your boobs out here that's my vision moving on you guys today we're going to be talking about the ruby frankie case because it is not something that i initially expected to cover are you familiar with it the woman on youtube she's a mormon she was abusing her children but now I want to cover it simply because I listened to her at court and I don't know how to feel about it. I, I thought her statement was actually very impactful and I feel strange saying that about somebody who quite literally abused her children. Let's talk about it. Plus, later on in the show, you're not going to believe it, or maybe you will, but the media is currently trying to brainwash people to love dirty cities, love their rats, love their cockroaches because, well, yeah, you know, diversity is our strength. And it's diverse here with the rats and the cockroaches. By the way, guys, I don't know how I waited this long to do it, but later on in the show, we will be covering the fact that Beyonce is now a country singer. A lot of people are feeling a certain way about that. What's my viewpoint? I know you want to hear it, and you're going to be glad to know that I'm just going to rip Matt Walsh's content because I can. It's Black History Month, and there's nothing that he can say about it that wouldn't make him a racist. All that and more today coming up on Candace Owens. Okay. Okay, Ruby Frankie, I think you guys are going to be really interested in this case if you are not following it. Um, initially, we hmm. thought about covering it on the show, but it was just kind of one of those weird, uh, out in Utah, they are a Mormon family, there, there's nothing wrong with them obviously being Mormon, I have tons of Mormon listeners. I just didn't know if it was going to add anything to the discussion to cover this because it got quite dark. She was one of these YouTubers, there's tons of them now that look like they have the perfect family, right? That was kind of the draw of her YouTube channel. They, it was entitled Eight Passengers and it featured her, her husband, and their six children. Super cute, everybody's dressed well, You're, you know, they're church going, they're supposed to be this perfect Christian family. And then things got really dark and I'm going to tell you exactly what happened. They had two million subscribers and people started realizing that some of her punishing techniques were a little strange following her rise they started to criticize the fact that she was allowing her children to prank one another and then they recognized that one of what? her children was sleeping in a beanbag this was back in june 2020 
and concerned viewers of the channel actually went ahead wow. and contacted the local child protective services saying like something's not right. They even launched a change.org petition saying that, hey, you know, as a form of punishment, you shouldn't be allowing your child to sleep in the beanbag. And when people asked her about this, she basically said, no, he loves it. Like this is actually a healthy form of punishment, whatever it was. And then it got a little bit darker. In August of 2022, she also faced criticism for refusing to bring lunch to her then six-year-old after her daughter said wow. she had packed food but had actually forgotten it, right? So as a punishment for forgetting the food, she said, I'm just going to refuse to bring the children lunch. I'm just not going to allow the six-year-old to eat. Again, way too harsh. People were noticing this, but... CPS did nothing about it. Uh, the police officers, despite going to her home a few times, didn't actually do anything extreme. And then everything exploded in August of last year. Both Frankie and a woman named Jody Nan Hildebrandt were arrested. Now, Jody Nan Hildebrandt, just for clarity, is her mentor. It's the mother's mentor. She also describes her as a counselor to the children. And they were both arrested after her 12-year-old son escaped from Hildebrand's house, his counselor's wow. house, and ran to a neighbor to call 911. That is true. The boy was malnourished. He had visible injuries with duct tape on his limbs. And later, he would tell investigators that Hildebrand, his alleged counselor, his mom's mentor, what? would put cayenne pepper and honey on his wounds that were caused by being tied what? with the rope. That's at least according to the arrest warrants. The public safety department in Utah in Santa Clara, Ivins, said that they proceeded to the residence and they discovered that there was another juvenile that was in comparable condition, someone that was also malnourished, that wasn't being fed well. You get deeper into this case and it gets even stranger. Uh, the woman, the, the mother that is, was telling her children that they were possessed and the children believed it. There was one particular, uh, going through the court document, she was telling her young daughter, I can't even imagine this unimaginable evil, that the punishments that she was putting her through were necessary to absolve her from possessions. And I remember just looking at this case and deciding not to cover it because I was first and foremost just infuriated. Anything that involves children, you know, precious children and parents that are warping their brains or government officials that are warping their brains makes me so angry that I don't even want to speak of it. It puts me in a bad mood. But things got really interesting when she was due to give her statement in front of the court. So I will update you to let you know that she is now up for 30 years in prison and she's not fighting it. So typically what you see in these scenarios is you get a lawyer, a lawyer will say to you, oh, look, like you look like the perfect family. Let's try to get your sentence reduced. Maybe you can plead temporary insanity, right? Maybe we can say, oh, you had no other charges in the past. You've had a squeaky clean record. We're so used to seeing that in the court system where people are just trying to get away with their crimes that the Ruby Frankie statement and the entire court case has shocked me because she has completely submitted to it. Okay, so she has said, nope, I, she's not fighting this. She wants this to be over quickly. That's why we're saying that she got arrested in August and already she's being sentenced because she's not fighting the charges. In fact, she has said that I want to go to prison. I deserve to go to prison for what I have done. I'm going to allow you to hear some bits of her statement so that we can talk about it because I don't know how to feel about it. I feel weird about this and I actually want to know what you guys think about her statement. First and foremost, uh, like I said, she opens up by saying, I'm not fighting this, and take a listen to what she had to say. I would like to make a statement without any intent to change my stipulated sentence. For the past four years, I've chosen to follow counsel and guidance that has led me into a dark delusion. My distorted version of reality went largely unchecked as I would isolate from anyone who challenged me. I was led to believe that this world was an evil place filled with cops who control hospitals that injure, government agencies that brainwash, church leaders who lie and lust, husbands who refuse to protect, and children who need abused. My choice to believe and behave this paranoia culminated into criminal activity for which I stand before you today ready to take accountability. Okay, wow, well, there's a lot to unpack there. So first and foremost, she's, I'm, I, I'm not trying to reduce the sentence here. She's saying, I need to go to prison. 
And then she starts talking about her delusion and how she got there. So I should probably clarify for you guys that the reason that her husband was not arrested is because they had separated 13 months prior to all of this going down. And in fact, they had been in counseling together since 2021 with Jody Nan Hildebrandt. So this woman who was providing her counseling, this woman who I guess you could say was acting the part of a psychologist, is also the woman that allegedly led her to these delusions. So she says wow. she made her think that even her husband was against her, that the church was against her, that the government was against her. And when she goes in deeper on this, and when you look at this at this case, you find out that she got there really by training her to believe that everything was some sort of a conspiracy, that the entire world, that she, she had to execute these sorts of punishments against her children to help them. And you might say that's absurd. How could somebody brainwash you, Candace, to abuse your own children? How could someone brainwash you not to believe in your own husband, to turn against your own life, to turn against your own church, to think everything is some sort of a conspiracy? Guys, are you paying attention to psychology today? We are having children that are being convinced that they're different species. You know, I sat down with Brianna, who identifies as trans, but was very um, open and totally fine with me referring to Brianna as a he. A wonderful interview, but that really opened my eyes to the danger of psychology that Brianna had shared with us that he chopped off, went to a, a doctor to have his private parts removed, and Brianna freely admits this is because I was deluded by people that I was supposed to trust. So yeah, this then, in that context, in the context of our society today, does not seem so extreme anymore. When you, when you trust somebody, that they can say to you, no, 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 like everybody around you is not telling you the truth, right? And the reason why I even more suspected that this could be true and that she fell victim to a potential psychopath is because the judge, even when he was dealing with Jody Non, this Jody Non Hildebrandt, this counselor, acknowledged how dark and how disturbed he was by the lack of emotion, that he didn't feel that there was any remorse coming from this counselor whatsoever about what she had done. But I want to keep going here because now you understand that somebody got in to Ruby Frankie's mind and convinced Ruby that she needed to abuse her children because the whole world was against her, right? Listen to this part of the statement. At first, I want to be clear, we're not showing you everything. Ruby goes around and actually thanks the doctors, thanks the police officers, thanks everybody who she says saved her children, contrary to what she was led to believe, that they wouldn't be able to, to do anything to help her children, that they were all conspiring against her. And then she moves on and she addresses her family, her mother, her father, her husband. Take a listen. My charges are just. They offer safety to my family, accountability to the public, and they did show mercy to me. My mother and father, I have been utterly wretched to you. You have offered me unconditional love, and for that I have offered you unconditional contempt. My husband of more than 23 years, you are the love of my life. I'm so sorry to leave to you to finish what we both started together. The ending of our marriage is a tragedy. It is all wrapped around my heart. It is not all I'll never be able to undo. She says there, in case you couldn't understand it, that the ending of her marriage is a tragedy. And at this moment in the courtroom, because reporters were in the room, her husband broke down crying too. And just to be clear, her husband asked for her to be sent to prison as well. Obviously, he's horrified by what happened to his children in his absence. But you could just sense that there was a lot of love between them. He just lost his wife. Psychology completely warped somebody who he loved and who he married and turned her into a monster. And she is acknowledging that she became a monster and that she deserves the punishment, you know, that she deserves to go to prison. But it's this last portion that I felt was so compelling. And it was really her plea to God. And she again asked for no mercy in this courtroom, but listen to what she says. <laughs> I'm sorry for twisting God's word and distorting his doctrines. I 
my greatest desire is to stand on his court someday spotless and confident. And Judge Walton, I know that standing before you today is a necessary step towards that end. I'm committed to continuing my learning until all of my toxic layers are shed and I am ready to re-enter as a contributing member of our beautiful society. She says there that her greatest desire is to one day stand in God's court spotless and confident. And that's why she wants to go to prison. She wants to go to prison because she wants to make sure that she serves time for the sins that she has committed against her own family, her mother, her father, her children, her friends. It's worth listening to her message to the court in its entirety if you guys want to go out there and pursue it and really think about it. And I'm just wondering how you guys feel about it because I am so used to in this society everyone being told that they have a right. right? I committed this crime but you should understand why I did it because I was abused when I was a child. Everyone looking for an excuse. Everyone being handed an excuse largely by psychiatrists. You're a bad person, but we understand, you know, you lost your mother in their youth and that, and that's your honor is why she did it because she lost her mother at a very young age and it changed her. Oh, this person did something horrible, but you should hear about what happened to them. That was an absolute tragedy when they were a child. I hate that. It, it means that everyone gets away with everything all the time. And so I think just the way that she approached this surprised me because we don't see this anymore. We don't see someone just coming to heal and saying, you know what, I'm completely wrong and I deserve every single thing that is thrown at me. I just want to clarify that regardless of her statement and regardless of what happened here, obviously the victims are the children. What, ha what happened here only created a certain set of victims and they are her children and also her surrounding family and I don't want to remove that I'm not trying to remove that at all I just thought that this was something that we never see and it was at least interesting to discuss and that's all I'm going to say about that 2024 has already been a year rife with global instability so how do you protect your family in the midst of all this chaos a great place to start is by protecting your savings it's not too late to invest in gold with Birch Gold Group today Unlike many other investments, gold can act as a safe haven during turbulent times by providing a hedge against inflation and economic uncertainty. Birch Gold will help you convert your existing IRA or a 401k into a tax-sheltered IRA in gold, and it will cost you nothing out of pocket. While diversification does not eliminate risk entirely, Birch Gold's experts can help you manage and reduce, providing a more resilient foundation for your financial well-being. Talk to one of their trusted experts today. Just text Candace to 989898 and Birch Gold will send you a free info kit today. With an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, thousands of satisfied customers, Birch Gold has been the exclusive gold company of a daily wire for the past seven years. Text Candace to 989898 to claim your free info kit on gold. That's Candace to 989898. Okay, now it's time for some topics du jour. Before we get into our first topic, you know what I'm going to say? I am watching you. Subscribe if you are watching. You know, I think one of the things that changed me the most in my young adulthood, in my 20s, was that I traveled. I traveled a lot uh, because I was working for a family that was a lot wealthier than me, and they traveled a lot, and so it necessarily brought me to all different countries. And it made me, I guess, be able to contextualize America better, right? Because if you're like most Americans, you don't travel. Most Americans, I think, don't even have a passport. America's pretty big. It's pretty expansive. And so when you travel at first, you're definitely probably going to stay within the first, within the, within the 50 states. But when you get out of the United States and you see the rest of the world, you start to wonder about certain things. Something that I noticed is that a lot of countries are cleaner than America. And so recently, obviously, the big deal is how dare Tucker Carlson go over to Russia and notice some things. And one of the things that he did was a segment just about the grocery stores in Russia. He talked about how the prices were cheaper. He was actually amazed, like, because obviously the narrative have, has been that they're on the brink of economic collapse. And really what happened is he collapsed that narrative. You know, if, if America is so great, why are we the ones that are suffering at the pump? Why are we the ones that are suffering when we go to the grocery store? And he also highlighted how clean the subways were, which is something that I have noticed. The subways in our inner cities are absolutely filthy. It does not have to be that way. Again, it's not just in Russia. I don't want to think it's just Russia. Tokyo. 
you know, unbelievably clean society, also extremely moral in, in the stance that you could, in the circumstance that you could drop your wallet yeah. in Tokyo and someone would return it. Nobody would steal it. It just doesn't have to be this way. Well, the mainstream media is like, oh my gosh, we don't want people to notice. We keep telling everybody that America's great and it's fine. When in reality, it kind of feels like we've become the commies. You're just taking so much money from the taxpayer. We don't know where it's going. It keeps disappearing. You can't have any accounting. We're taking billions, but oh, uh oh, we can't account for it anymore. We don't know where it went. Ukrainians are suspiciously buying yachts, but we don't know where the money went. We don't know where the money went. And people are starting to notice. And so these mainstream journalists, these mainstream nighttime talk hosts are now going, uh, narrative, what do we do? And so what they're doing is they're trying to convince you to take pride in the filth. I'm not kidding. Listen to the narrative. Listen to Jon Stewart on The Daily Show tell you why you should be fine with the filth. Right. Because the difference between our urinal caked chaotic subways and your candelabra beautiful subways is the literal price of freedom. <laughs> You're free, guys. It's we're free. You just enjoy that. Okay, who cares? They've got candelabras lit and, and nice music. And it smells good down there. At least you're free. By the way, do you guys feel free right now? That's the thing I love. Do you, are you feeling the freedom as we've had to fight speech censors, how they've gotten very dramatic as they're trying to force vax you at work? There had to be an actual lawsuit to stop that. And people being force vaxxed and because it's obviously wrong and it's absurd that it even had to go to the Supreme Court. And yeah, your government wants more and more territory. As Okay, so I don't know. I didn't hear anything about Beyonce in the in the whole of this video. Is it just me or what exactly? Probably towards the end she started talking about Beyonce. So, uh, what she said about that lady, the woman that um abused her children, and she's serving them for that. I really feel bad for her because her story is uh, a really sad one. Like. How is somebody so manipulative to the point that they affect your mental, they affect your brain and you start to maltreat your own children, even your own husband? Like, that is crazy. That is crazy. What do you guys think about this video? I want to hear from you guys. Our time is already fast spent. So, uh, I want to hear your thoughts in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, Give it a huge thumbs up and if you're new here, join the game, join Vera City. If you subscribe button below, turn on the post notification bell so that you can always be the first person to know whatever a new video drops. With that, guys, see you in the next one. Bye, guys.